Hey guys, my name is Brent. I'm one of the trainers here at Canines Only, and today we're gonna to be going over another question from our Ask the Trainer section in our monthly newsletter. Um, now, the topic we're gonna to be talking about today, it is literally the number three chronic issue that we deal with in dog training. Okay, what's number one and number two? Well, number one is jumping, number two is pulling on a leash, and number three is leash reactivity. And funny enough, all three of these issues are somehow related, okay? The big three things that these things have in common is a lack of focus in the dog, a lack of self-control in the dog, and also a lack of limit or boundary established prior to the actual behavior itself, okay? So let's talk about this a little bit more in detail as we progress through the video, okay? So the big thing that we have to understand when talking about leash reactivity um, is sometimes it is actually first started as early as eight to ten months of age. Now, why is this important? Okay, eight to ten months of age is probably going to be one of the first, uh, it's a first developmental shift for your dog where all of a sudden you have a child or a puppy starting to become more of a young adolescent. Okay, so eight months to ten months is usually the range that most dogs start becoming teenagers. Okay. Uh, it is not uncommon for puppies to not show aggression or attitude basically because they are children. Okay? But as soon as the hormones start kicking in and development starts taking over, uh, they start feeling a little stronger, they start feeling a little bit more assertive, and probably for the first time in that puppy's life do they actually stand up for themselves. Okay? So keep that in mind. Age is a big thing. Okay, most people, when they tell us their dog all of a sudden started reacting or barking or lunging towards other dogs, I guarantee you it's somewhere in the adolescent stage that this behavior started. Okay, so one thing to keep in mind. Now, the second question to ask yourself is why would our dogs all of a sudden react where once they didn't react before? Okay, the answer to that question lies in an underlying insecurity that does develop with our dogs throughout their life. Now, this insecurity could be as simple as the dog hasn't been exposed to enough dogs. This insecurity could be as simple as maybe the dog uh, is really attached to their owner and sometimes they get protective of their owners. Um, and third, sometimes dogs can just have very bad encounters or too many close calls um, that makes them nervous over time. Okay, so I think our next thing that we have to learn to understand because that last one needs the most explanation is this. There's something called flight distance in animal behavior. And what flight distance is, is the proximity before an individual becomes nervous, right? And what I mean is, let's say if I'm being approached by an individual, how close does that individual actually have to get to me before I feel threatened, okay? So this is called flight distance. Now, uh, everyone and every creature has a certain length or distance of flight distance. Uh, but what happens is we sometimes forget, as humans, we have been taught to actually control our tolerance to flight distance, right? We have been conditioned from the time that we're children to stand very close to one another, to sit next to each other in class, to sit next to each other uh, on, a, on a public school bus, um, etc. So there's so many different times where we're forced to share space and deal with it uh, as growing up as a human. Right? And sometimes this particular um, trait or skill is not completely developed in some dogs. Now to add to this, a lot of times one of the biggest mistakes we make as dog owners is we allow our dogs to be put in um, what, can, what it can be perceived by the dog um, stressful or anxious situations, okay? The most common one is this. If I'm walking my puppy down the street and I see another puppy coming down the street, now, we don't know if these two dogs like each other, but a lot of times we assume, you're a puppy, you're a puppy, you guys must totally get along, okay? And what happens is because we are so eager to get our dogs to socialize with one another on their walk, we end up actually encroaching on their flight distance. Now, sometimes these transactions go very well, where the do dogs play and all of a sudden you create a best friend for life. But a high percentage of the time, this sometimes goes either way, okay? 
Uh, the dogs might be able to sniff, be cordial. Sometimes the dogs might be a little weirded out because a strange dog is getting too close to their masters. Um, but what ends up happening is over time, if the dog is not enjoying the transaction completely, it can develop a little bit of a sour taste in their mouth, okay? And eventually what happens is too many close calls, too many potential bad experiences, and too many forced visits can sometimes make the dog feel that they are no longer in control of their own flight distance because we're kind of sometimes forcing the dog to interact with another dog, okay? So in puppyhood, Dogs are not necessarily going to stand up for themselves. They might take it, they might roll over, they might show their belly, they might show appeasement behaviors. But what ends up happening, as the dog gets a little bit older, sometimes the dog learns to stand up for themselves, okay? And then there's something called an emotional threshold where finally the dog gets so completely fed up with either their behavior, the potential danger that the other dog might be bringing to them, maybe the dog's looking at him funny, and what happens is for the first time in that dog's life, he goes Rum! and he barks at them or he lunges at them or he pulls or snaps at them. And this happens as a way to diffuse the situation. Pretty much that dog is saying, I don't want this to happen anymore. Stop it. Okay. But unfortunately what happens is if this continuously happens day after day, the dog ends up getting worse and worse and worse and then later in life your dog thinks the best defense is a good offense so if I see a dog approaching us approaching me probably one of the best reactions to do is to tell that dog to go away so that we don't have to deal with any drama okay now what happens after these first couple initial behaviors we see a lot of times owners don't handle it in the best way uh, which is which is completely normal. You know, if you're not used to handling your dog being reactive, we don't expect you to all of a sudden know how to do it. Um, and but this is usually the time now. If we can catch it while it's early, this is very a very easy issue to fix. But the problem with chronic issues as they get worse and worse as the dog gets older and older, they become harder to break because that cycle of behavior starts becoming ingrained in the dog's head. Okay. Um, Every dog is a little bit different because some dogs have a tendency of being a little bit more dominant than others. Some dogs can technically be more insecure or, or uh, introverted than others. Uh, and some dogs uh, love their parents and their family so much they can actually even be more territorial or protective of their masters. On a, uh, it happens all the time. Um, the key to fixing an issue like this is we really have to figure out where the root of this is coming from. Okay. It is a little bit mixture of the dog's past experiences. Usually there is a little bit of a strong character fit into the dog as well. Um, and sometimes the dog also feels that it doesn't matter what they try, the only way that they get the, the, uh, to feel safe is by reacting first. And so sometimes we have to deal with breaking uh, a bad habit that has been formed. Okay, And in order to really do that, you really do have to assess the dog on an individual basis. You do also have to assess the owners to make sure that they're doing as much as they can within their power to make sure that the dog is not um, uncomfortable. So common things that people do do, they'll pull on the leash very tightly, they'll start yanking on the dog. Uh, sometimes they'll even pet the dog while they're being aggressive to hope that the dog uh, gets soothed or calmed down. Um, and sometimes, without the proper guidance, those techniques, um, they can't, they, they're not necessarily gonna yield the results that we want from you guys, okay? Because it's something that we have to do consistently. So in a situation like this, what I do recommend is that you do call a trainer um, and have them assess and evaluate your dog. Um, here at Canines Only, we do have a, a big team of Canines Only dog trainers uh, that are able to assess the situation to be able to help you and give you guys a, a better idea of what it could be and how to, and how to address these issues. Um, ideally, if we can catch it when it first starts, these issues are so much easier to fix um, in a short period of time. Um, dogs who have been doing this for years, you are not, uh, you know, you are not low on hope. It is possible, but just know that you do have to counter condition a lot of behaviors that have been conditioned for many, many years or many, many months. Okay, so a couple of things for you guys to just keep in mind. Leash aggression is the number three issue that has to be dealt with. Okay. 
Um, a lot of it has to do with how close we are to other people in the city and how many dogs there are per square block. Um, and so it's not an uncommon issue, but it is something that can be very easily fixed if you have the right training and if you have the right guidance, okay? Um, I hope that this was helpful for at least letting you guys understand what, what the behavior is about. Um, and if you guys have any questions, please feel free to call a canines only trainer um, at, uh, at the number on our newsletter. All right, guys. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and a wonderful month of December. I hope you guys have a great, great time with your dogs. Have a good day.